In this week's video, I show you how I fabricated and welded up this new cart for my bandsaw. It used to sit on these short little legs, and now I have a fully functional, portable bandsaw cart. So, let's get into it and I'll show you how I did it. Alright, so for those of you who have watched some of my other videos, um, you can see that my bandsaw is not in its normal location. And the reason that is, is because this week I am finishing my long overdue project of designing and building a cart with casters on it for this. So, for those of you who have watched the other videos, it used to sit on these little red legs that I have here. And these would bolt to the saw itself on either side. Three connections on each side. And it worked out really good. There's nothing actually wrong with it, except that me being 6'1", means that that saw, where it cuts, was only about knee high. And for me, it's just more of an inconvenience than anything, and I wanted to make this so it's more user-friendly for myself, and so I can have a little more storage space with this as well. So the plan is I'm going to build a frame to fit around the saw here out of angle iron, and I'm going to have a larger frame underneath of it, and we're going to do kind of a a frame build with the legs going from the top piece to the bottom piece so the new height will be just slightly lower than this table here so it's about I believe I measured 34 to 35 inches to the cutting base from the ground where before it was only about 18 so the plan is to get this thing up to snuff with a new cart I'm also gonna update a few other things on here as well so one thing that's a little annoying is that this extension cord on here is very short, and since I wired in my own plugs in this basement, and they're wired into the ceiling here, it barely fits, and when you lift the saw's arm all the way up, it unplugs it. So, because it also needs it, and because of that, I'm going to completely rewire this, where you can see these connections are old, they've been broken, they've been re-spliced and fixed. If we look at the motor itself, you can see in there connections are barely holding on. They're on their last leg. They've been cut and re-spliced a few times, so they're barely long enough to actually connect anymore. And underneath, there's a junction box that has the uh, U-shaped connectors in there with a screw that I need to clean up and fix as well. And then same thing for the switch as well because it's a little tricky as far as the connectivity for it. So I'm going to replace the switch rewire it, build this cart, and replace this belt for it because you can see it's old and dry routing. So that's the plan for this week. Uh, kind of a complete upgrade or restoration, you could almost call it, for this bandsaw. So let's see how it goes. All right, so I got the top part cut up and uh, fixtured here on the table ready to weld. And I wanted to stop here just to show you a few things I had to do to make this work properly. So this is one and a half by one and a half tubing, or sorry, not tubing, angle iron. And you'll notice that I had to cut a section out here and a section out here. When I tried dry fitting it, uh, I knew this one was going to be a problem. So I had to cut this out so it would fit flush to the frame here and not have to build extra pieces to make that work and then the one piece I did forget about was this to hold it when it's up so I cut that other section out for that and I did the same on the front over here because the spindle to loosen and tighten the clamp is right there and that was going to interfere with that so had to do a little bit more work than I thought I was going to to get this done but you can see we 45 all these cuts uh, Nice good fit up, so I'm going to do outside corners on these and then weld from the back side after that so that this sits in there flush without wiggling around from the welds being on top here. So let's go ahead and get going with that.
right, so we got the bottom piece all fixtured up, ready to go. Now we're just gonna get to the welding. Alright, so we got this thing mostly welded up, and the last thing I need to do is put these casters on. Um, unfortunately, it's going to make it a little taller than I wanted it to, since these are about 5 inches tall. And after setting it on top of this, my bandsaw that is, with it on the floor, it was pretty close to the height I wanted to, maybe just a hair bit taller. So, I had to make a few adjustments to get this to work. So, I initially wanted to put the casters in this corner here where I could just take my bracket, weld it in flush upside down like that, and then my casters would fit underneath bolted on. But it was gonna make it too tall, so what I had to do was this. So what I'm doing now is I have my plate to bolt my casters to, and when I was initially doing this, when I cut these, they were built for the inside corners, and if I use these existing ones, they would actually turn and hit the frame so I wouldn't get the full adjustability of these casters. So because of that, I had to add a little extra piece to that and just to make sure that these stay strong, I'm also cutting a piece of scrap tubing that I had. Oh, it looks like the ducks are calling. And just cutting it to a 45 on each side, giving it a good support and you can already tell that with this as it is, it's gonna be rock solid and it's just tacked together. So after I fully weld it, will be good to go, but that's gonna be the plan for all four sides, just extending it off the ends like this. That way I can bolt these down, and then we still get a little bit of ground clearance with the bottom of this to the wheel, but it's not so tall that it feels like um, this saw is just up by my armpits when I'm using it. So let's see how that goes. So here's the finished product. So unfortunately, um, I didn't get to the electrical yet and I'm going to split those up into its own video just because this video is already getting pretty long. But you can see the cart came out really well. We got all four casters, they all lock and we don't have to worry about any interference with them rotating as I move this around. And this thing is pretty rock solid. And now, you know, it's at a height where I don't have to squat down to use it, and it's tall enough for me that we can actually use this pretty effectively now. Also, if I want to now, since I have a much sturdier base, I can stand this up and use it as a scroll saw as well to cut different dim or different angles that would be a little harder to dial in on this bandsaw. So overall, super pleased with this build. 
And you might be asking, why did I make such a large bottom piece? Well, the reason for that is because I wanted to use this as extra storage space as well. And I designed it. So that it can hold two milk crates on the bottom. So kind of the idea is that we're going to have one for all my shorter scrap pieces of steel that I don't necessarily want to throw away because I could use them for a project. So you can see we've got part of a plate, some small square tubing in there. And then I'll probably have something else in the other one. I'm not sure exactly what yet, but for now it's just going to be two things of storage and it has the potential to turn into four as I could probably stack two more milk crates on top of this. So overall project came out awesome. The one thing I was worried about was this being a little tipsy, but with the wheels, it doesn't uh, have that problem at all. And having the wheels come out farther than the frame itself really helped to make this a much more rigid frame and then having the slight A-frame design to it, it just overall came out much better than I expected. And if you have any questions or comments about this saw, uh, please let me know. I do my best to help you out. Otherwise, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.